Hey everyone, I'm Laura from Laura G Yoga and this is going to be the Heart Chakra video for our Chakra Yoga sequence. And the Heart Chakra is called Anahata Chakra in Sanskrit and this means unstuck or unending pattern. And that refers to how the heart beats continuously through our whole life to sustain our life in this body. Now with the heart chakra, this is one of my favorites to do in my practice because what can happen is when we're not open to the future or the unknown things that are coming for us, we have a tendency to round our posture and to pull our heart back because we're not open to what's going to happen. So in our heart opening practice, we want to find a good balance between the front of the heart and the back of the heart. Now the back of the heart is where we push the emotions that we don't necessarily want to deal with or want to process or the emotions that we don't want to put out there for the rest of the world to see if we're dealing with something like sadness or grief or depression. That's not something that we necessarily put out there for everyone to see. Where the front of our heart is the emotions that we do like to put out there. It's kind of like the, um, the Facebook version of our life where we show the happy things, the joyful things that we go through, the wonderful experiences that we want to share with people. So we want to find this balance of being able to open the front and the back of the heart so that we can process through the hard emotions and we can experience the desirable emotions more fully and hopefully more frequently. The um, heart chakra, the most important thing that we get from the heart chakra is our self-acceptance and that's really the baseline of what we're trying to do here is work on this process of self-acceptance rather than constantly going through this process of self-improvement that you feel like you have to be better before you're going to accept yourself or love yourself. We want to try to get to that point where we're totally accepting of who we are right now without having to change anything. And when we get to that point where we're totally accepting of ourself, we find that we're more accepting of the way that other people are exactly as they are with all of their imperfections or quirks that um, we can just accept them exactly like that. And it makes our interpersonal relationships really a lot more enjoyable because we're not constantly trying to fix other people or make them improve. So for the physical practice, we're going to do a lot of work on the chest, the upper back, the thoracic spine, which is really tight, the arms, all the way down the arms and the hands. So everything across this part of the body has to do with that heart chakra. And we want to work on our posture so that we have that open posture being um, ready for what's going to come ahead of us and making sure that our past isn't burdening us to the point where we're rounded. So let's start out with um, a heart bench, which is a really great way to open up our posture. I don't know if you can see the blue blocks on my blue mat, but I have my block on the highest setting in the back and then the medium setting lengthwise here. And I'm just going to turn my back. And this bottom block is going to support my spine so that I get a nice lift through my heart. And the top block, I'm just going to adjust so that it has the back of my head. And you don't want to go so far back that your chin is popping up to the ceiling. It's actually helping you with a little bit of a tuck. And then just drop your arms out to the sides. Here we all have chronic tightness across the chest from bad posture and especially from driving and working at a computer. So with this one you're going to use your exhales to just try and melt your shoulders back. Find some stretch right through those pectoral muscles. If you want to change your leg position you can open the knees out to the sides, have the soles of the feet together.
just going to start to open and close my hands. A little bit of pumping movement through my hands. But without adding any tension into the shoulders. stand for a pretty long time if you want to get a deeper opening, like three to five minutes. It's a really good pose to practice in your yin practice. Okay, come into your comfortable seat and we'll start with our heart opening breath. We're going to press the palms together into the heart in our symbol of gratitude. And then as you inhale, you're going to open the arms back, palms go up to the ceiling, reach your thumbs back as far as they'll go. And on your exhale, you gather your palms together and come back into that pose of gratitude. Inhale, expand the heart out. Exhale, pull the hands back. Pausing with the hands at the heart, settling into that feeling of gratitude. And it might be gratitude for your practice today, that you're physically healthy enough to go through these movements and this breath work. Or gratitude for the teachings that have been passed down for thousands of years so that we can have these tools to help us in our life. hands down and let's take another deep chest opener. We're going to take the soles of the feet onto the mat with the knees together. Turn the fingertips so that they're facing away from you. You're going to walk them back along the mat. You might be able to get your arms close enough that your pinky fingers are right next to each other, but if the arms don't go that close, that's okay too. Now the part where the chest opening really comes in is you scoot your hips just about an inch or two forward. And then start to inhale, lift the heart up toward the ceiling. And if you don't quite feel that yet, scoot the hips down another inch or two. Roll your inhale up into the chest and find some lift. to get my hips up a bit. Okay. Roll your shoulders up, back, and down. And then let that roll all the way through the arms. Arms come up and down. We hold a huge amount of tension around our shoulders and the base of the neck, so we want to try to loosen that up. Let the hands drop down. So we'll take a Kundalini Kriya next. We're going to hook the fingers together. I'm going to inhale, lift my left elbow, drop my right elbow, and then exhale the other way. So it's inhale, exhale. It's almost like a propeller, and the hands are right in front of the heart chakra.
of that down. Flip the hands so you have the opposite hand on top. Hook the fingers together, and we'll take the breath the same way. Inhale, left elbow up. Exhale, right elbow up. down. Let the arms drop. And after a Kundalini Kriya, you come into this moment of stillness, this moment of observance, to see if you can notice any subtle changes. And we'll release the hands and roll over onto the knees. We're just going to come into a kneeling position, up into kneeling mountain pose, draw the belly in, find a little tuck in your tailbone so that you can lift up through the center line of your body. And we'll take the arms out front and we're going to come into eagle pose, nesting the right elbow on top of the left elbow and then bending so that the back of the hands come together and then we'll wrap the palms so that the fingers are kind of resting on the other palm, or pretty close to it. And then with your inhale, start to lift up through your fingertips. Find some expansion through your upper back. This is one of the poses where we're working on that stuck area at the back of the heart center, where we push the emotions that we don't want to deal with, or that we don't want to put out there for the rest of the world to see. But it's important to process through those. And we'll start to make a little bit of a circle here with the arms down, out, and around. And then up and around the other way, just very gentle with those circles. As you come back into center, opening the shoulder blades out to the sides, and then we'll tip the arms over toward the right side. And what I'm doing is just pressing with my left hand to roll my right arm out. And this is a really deep stretch into my rotator cuff muscles, which are pretty much always tight. Coming back up into the center, untwist the arms and sweep them up. On your exhale, come down into child's pose with the hands back by the heels. And then we're going to roll up into rabbit pose. So for this one, hold on to your feet and roll up toward the top of your head, but there's almost no weight on my head. I can lift it right up because my stomach muscles are pulling up to create support. As my hands hold on to my heels, I'm creating this expansion through my upper back to spread my shoulder blades. Releasing the feet, rolling all the way down. We'll come back up into our kneeling mountain. And this time, arms come out in front. Cross your left elbow on top. Bend the elbows and maybe wrap one more time if you can into eagle. And we expand up through the fingertips and press out through the elbows to find that space in the upper back. making space for yourself to process through any kind of difficult emotions that come up, especially when you get to the challenging parts of your practice. And we'll start to gently circle the arms.
And then coming back into center, I'm going to press with my right palm to tip my left hand out to the side, getting into my rotator cuff. Back up through center, open the arms up. And then as we exhale, come down into child's pose. We'll get ready for our second round of rabbit. Holding the heels, curling the toes underneath, rolling up onto the top of the head. But again, no weight on the top of the head, just resting it on the floor. Find that expansion through the upper back. Release the feet, roll it down, we'll come up into table. And then with the right foot, let's step up into a lunge. We'll lift up into Anjaneyasana. Nice low lunge. I'll take my right arm out to the side, drop the thumb down toward the floor and start to sweep it up behind the back, internally rotating the right arm and then externally rotating the left arm. And this is our pose where we're trying to open the shoulders and open the front of the heart. So as you inhale, lift your chest, draw the elbow points back. Release those arms, come back down to frame your right foot, and then we're just going to switch sides. Take your right foot back, step your left foot up, inhale up into Anjane, find some lift in your lower belly. We'll take the left arm out to the side, drop the thumb to the floor, and then walk that arm up behind your back. Right fingers up to the ceiling and then drop to the back of your head, down the neck. Maybe you can hook the fingers together, but if not, just press your hand into wherever it is on your back. Inhale, lift the chest and roll the points of the elbows back. Finding that front of the heart opening, that openness to the future and to whatever is going to come to us down the road. Release the top arm, release the bottom arm, frame the left foot, we'll curl your right toes underneath, and this time we're going to step up to the top of the mat. And on your inhale, roll it up into standing into mountain. Okay, so I'm going to roll my arms open reach my fingertips down so there's this settling that happens in my shoulders and find an open chest and an open upper back we don't want to shorten either one of those so it's very balanced and we'll take the hands up into a kundalini stance with the fingers in front of the shoulder and the thumb behind the shoulder so we're going to exhale bring the points of the elbows together inhale open it up Spread the elbows, exhale together, inhale, open.
more breaths. And rest, drop the hands down. Settle into that place of awareness. And turn back toward the top of the mat. Take the hands behind you into yoga mudra. And we'll roll down into a forward bend. Let the arms relax behind the head. Release the arms. Let them float down toward the floor. We'll step one leg back. And then the other leg back. So we'll come into a high plank pose and set your shoulder blades onto your back. Make sure that you're not totally pushing the floor away so that you're rounded. Shoulder blades flat. Engage the belly. Find some length through the center line of the body. And then lower it down. Maybe take chaturanga. You can use the knees if you need them. Release onto the mat. On our inhale, let's take a cobra. We'll lift it up. Find that strength with the upper back where you can take the hands off the mat without dipping down. Ground down through the pubic bone. The front of the pelvis is really firmly planted into the mat. And then with the points of the elbows, reach toward the back of the room to settle your shoulder blades. Take your exhale, release down. And now for this next one, I'm just going to flip over to the other side of my mat so that you can see this a little more easily. We're going to take a deep chest opener. I'm going to reach my right arm out to the side. I'm going to press into my left palm to roll toward the arm. And then open up my top knee so that I'm getting this deep stretch through my pectoral muscles. And if you feel like it's uncomfortable, you might be resting right on the head of the humerus, the bony part of the arm. You want to come out of it, walk your fingers out more, and then try to go into it again. See if you find a better position that way. Try that on the other side so that you can see it from the back. You walk the arm out this way. Roll over toward your side. Bend the top knee for support. You're trying to lean your weight back. And then if that's not a comfortable position for your shoulders, roll out of it. Walk your arm back more. And then try to come into it again. shoulders back a few times. We'll pull the shoulders up and then just let them drop down. Really loose. Last one. Pull the hands back into the heart. Settle into that place of gratitude. The most basic kind of gratitude we lean the thumbs back to the chest so that we can feel that heartbeat, we can feel that rhythm. And we'll take our heart opening breath. And 
comes back into the heart and release them down. We'll take one more posture for our practice here. And it's probably the most important posture for the heart chakra. We come into table and then we start to move like we're going back into child's pose, but we stop halfway and walk the hands forward into Anahata Asana or heart opening pose. Sinking your heart down toward the floor. You can either rest your chin or your forehead. Sometimes this pose is called playful puppy pose. mantra is LAM, L-A-M. So we'll chant LAM three times. Internal mantra. I am a radiant being of love and compassion. I am a radiant being of love and compassion. Repeating this mantra to yourself anytime you feel like you're closing off through your heart, if you're rounding your posture or if you just feel yourself pulling away from things, remind yourself, I am a radiant being of love and compassion. So that ends our heart chakra practice for Anahata Chakra. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.